Hello and welcome to my very first installation tutorial for Arch Linux. Alrighty, so I have recorded this video literally two dozen times at this point, so we're going to do the Cliff's Notes version. I'm going to show you how to install Arch Linux on a virtual machine. First, archlinux.org. Click download. Find a mirror that you like at the bottom. I like iBiblio. Go to latest. Pick a disk. I recommend Core Dual because it has both 32 and 64 bits and all of the files you'll need to install both of those. I already have it downloaded, so I'm going to go ahead and set up my virtual box now. Click on New to create a new virtual machine. Click Next. Type in the name, Arch Linux in this case, and I'm going to select 64 bit because I want 64 bit. Click Next. Give it a RAM size, 1024 will give us a gig. Click Next, create a new hard disk, a virtual hard disk. And it's going to be dynamic, so it doesn't eat a bunch of hard drive space up immediately. It's going to be 30 gigs in my case, because I want lots of space to, to wiggle room around. <laughs> click Next, click Finish, click Finish, and you've got a virtual machine ready to go. Click Start, it will ask you what you want to do. Click Next. At this point, you need to select the disk, come into your little box over here, Add it. In my case, it's already in there, so I'll go ahead and just select it here. Hit select, next, finish. And it's going to boot from that disk. Now, I'm going to make this a little easier to see. You see we've got 32-bit, 64-bit to select from. If I hit tab, I can edit this boot line and add VGA equals 842 to the end. That will make it much, much larger. Ooh, very big. So now we're going to boot. Back in a second. And there we go, we are ready to log in. It has two logins available, root and arch. Root is the one you will do the install from, login is root. So now we'll type slash arch slash setup to start the setup process. It actually tells you that up there. Hit OK to start it. We've got eight steps to go through. Let's just run through them kind of quick. Select source, do it from the CD. If you haven't set up your network connection, let's not even worry about it right now. Just do it from the CD because you've got the CD and it's the core. Hit set clock, we're going to select your time zone and region. I'm going to be in America, I'm going to be in Kentucky. Wherever you are, select that. Time and date, select UTC, local time if you want local time, entirely up to you. That is correct for my local time though, so I'm going to return to the main menu. Prepare your hard drives. You can do this manually, but you don't have to. Since we're just doing it at a virtual machine, I'm going to auto prepare. This will give us a 100 meg boot partition, a 256 meg swap partition, a 7500 megabyte, 7.5 gigabyte root partition, and the rest, 22.8 gigs, will go to home directory. That's perfectly fine. Now, I'm going to use ext4 for mine. You can choose to use whatever partition type you want, uh, file system type, excuse me. Uh, ext is relatively stable the others you might gain some performance vfat i would just say don't do it ext4 is a good option though it's used by most major modern distros yes go ahead and erase everything and do what you need to do and as if by magic it automatically did everything we need to do to the drive hit return to main menu select packages now this is going to give us two steps. Go ahead and select base devel. We're going to assume we're going to do stuff in the AUR eventually. I'll explain what that is when we get to it. Hit OK. So this has a lot of stuff pre-installed on it. The one thing I would suggest adding to it is sudo because it does not come with it by default and you might want it down the road. If you don't want it, you don't have to put it in there. There are also wireless things in here such as Indus wrapper and Intel wireless drivers and Realtek drivers and whatever else. So feel free to look through there and see what else you want out of the box. Hit OK, hit Install Packages, OK, and then you wait for a couple of minutes. And like that, it is magically done. Really only took about a minute to do because we're all doing it locally. Go ahead and hit Continue. It's going to generate stuff, and now we're going to configure the system. We're going to choose Nano. I'm going to choose VI if you want to, but I'm not going to do that. So now we need to edit probably two files just to make life a little easier. RC.conf. I like to come in and rename the actual host name. See here it says host name my host. I want it to be something specific like ArchVM. You can make it whatever you want to. You could make it Megatron or SpaghettiOs or whatever. Uh, Control X, Y, enter to save it. Uh, if you're not familiar with Nano, I've got a video on that. Feel free to go watch it. Uh, in addition, I would select going to mirror list and pick the mirrors that are closest to you. I've found a couple that are not working appropriately today like VT and Easy News. So I'm gonna select Giggy, Net, and Georgia Tech and a couple of others. I'm just gonna do all of these from here down. That looks good, that looks beautiful. So Control X, Y, Enter to save it. Now we set a root password. I'm gonna make it really complicated. 
Yeah, that was the word password. I would recommend something more complicated on physical machines. Moving on. Hit done to end that. And then it takes a second to do stuff. And boom, just after a couple of seconds, we are back at this. We're ready to install the bootloader. I'm going to assume you don't have anything else on the system, or else you would probably use a different bootloader, but I'm going to use Grub on this. I like Grub. And now we have to make sure everything looks right on it. To make life a little easier for me, I'm actually going to add VGA equals 842 to the end. That way it will boot up and be all big and pretty like it is right now. Control X, Y, Enter. You don't have to do that necessarily. There are different resolutions anyway. Going ahead, making it the dev SDA master boot record. You can put it wherever you want to. I just recommend doing it at the actual master boot record of the drive. That way it will always have it there. Now we're ready to exit. And guess what? You just installed Arch Linux. Yeah, so now type reboot and we're gonna restart the system. Make sure to pull the disk out of the drive when it's rebooting. That way you don't boot to the disk again. So you have magic timing there, unmounted. So now it's ready to boot. And when I hit enter, magic big part, big size should come up. Now we wait. And you know, I'm just gonna let it go at this point. There we go, very little amount of time. Honestly, that was about 10, 15 seconds there. Arch VM login, the only user we've created is root because that's automatically created with the password password. Uh, so now we're in Arch, that's the installation, you're done. Uh, if you wanted to go anywhere from here, you can. Uh, I'm going to assume you're on VirtualBox. You've probably got some sort of network connection up and going with it. If you want to make sure you do, ifconfig will tell you. See, I've got Ethernet, and actually it looks like I've got NAT running because it's got a 10 dot something address. So, if I want to, I should be able to type pacman capital syu and that will update the system. Oh look, one of the mirrors that I chose doesn't work. However, I chose about two dozen mirrors, so it's fine. I will, however, go back in and fix that here in just a second. Oh, look, it's downloading a new version of Pac-Man, just like it does the first time every time, and Pac-Man's installed. Now, to fix that error, that gig enet error, I would go nano slash etc slash pacman dot d slash mirror list, and I will go in here and take out that mirror. Let's see, it was gig enet, put a comment in front of it, the hashtag in front of it, pound symbol, whatever you want to say then do an update again just to make sure everything's working appropriately. Look, no errors that time. Awesome. That's one of the things that I'm not terribly fond of about Arch. A lot of times the mirrors will go down, but it's relatively easy to switch them out. So, okay, we're going to replace the kernel firmware. Replace, yeah, these are mainly just renamed or updated packages. Nothing to be concerned about this first time. And we've got 99 megs of updates to download. Very cool. And while that's going, I'm just going to go ahead and end things here. After this point, it comes to creating new users and installing a bunch of new software and uh, Xorg and desktop environments and stuff. So yeah, we'll get to that in the second video. But for now, if you haven't already, go to my website, thisweekinlinux.com. Check me out on Twitter, twitter.com slash thisweekinlinux, facebook.com slash thisweekinlinux. I do a live show twice a week on live.thisweekinlinux.com, Wednesdays at 4 p.m. Eastern and Sundays at 9 p.m. Eastern, where basically I just sit around and answer your questions and talk about topics and stuff. Uh, also, I'm in the IRC channel about 24-7. Uh, at chat.thisweekinlinux.com or you can point your IRC client to irc.freenode.net in the pound twill channel, the hashtag twill channel. Uh, so that's about it. I'm going to continue this eventually, but for now I will quote a YouTuber that I've grown fond of very recently and say, bless your face. Peace out. Talk to you later, guys.